The Persians and the Medes conquered the Babylonian kingdom, where the Jewish people had been held captive for 70 years. A man named Cyrus was appointed king over all the people. God stirred the spirit of Cyrus, and he proclaimed this decree to the entire Persian kingdom. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has told me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So now, may all of God's chosen people, the Israelites, go up to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple of God, for he is the God who is in Jerusalem. This decree was astounding because the Persians did not know or worship God. After King Cyrus issued this decree to all the kingdom, many of the fathers and sons of the families of Judah who were being held captive agreed to leave their homes and go back to Jerusalem to help rebuild the temple of God. The task of rebuilding the temple was not an easy one, nor was it fast. The men of Judah had to travel a long, dangerous journey to get to Jerusalem. When they arrived in the devastated city, they were in constant fear of attacks from surrounding enemies. But this remnant of God's people would not quit or give up. It took them nearly 20 years with constant interference and threat of attack from surrounding enemies, but the temple of God was finally completed. There was a great celebration among the workers, priests, and people that lived in the city. Ezra was an important scribe and priest of God who lived during the Babylonian captivity. He devoted his life to the study of God's laws and statutes, teaching them to the Jewish people. When the temple was completed, Ezra went before the new king, Artaxerxes, and requested that he be allowed to return to Jerusalem to be priest and administrator of the new temple of God. The king answered Ezra and said, According to the wisdom of your God, which is in your hand, appoint magistrates and judges that they may judge all the people. Teach the laws of God to anyone who does not know them. Furthermore, the king said to Ezra, I issue a decree to all the people of Israel, their priests and Levites who are in my kingdom, to those who are willing to go to Jerusalem. You may go. In addition, the king gave Ezra and all the people leaving for Jerusalem gold, silver, and money from his kingdom to take with them. Ezra gave glory and honor to God for this great blessing and left for the city of Jerusalem to fulfill the call of God on his life. While Ezra was tending to the spiritual needs of the Jews in the newly rebuilt temple of God, a man named Nehemiah was cupbearer to the Persian king. Nehemiah was told the walls surrounding Jerusalem were still broken down and the gates had been burned to the ground. This caused great distress and fear to the people who had returned to live and worship in Jerusalem. They had no protection and constantly feared attacks from surrounding enemy nations. This was a great embarrassment to the people of Israel. Nehemiah was very sad when he heard this news. He fell down before the Lord and prayed and fasted for God's favor to be upon him as he went before the king. He told the king about the desolation of the wall and the gates that were consumed by fire. The king asked Nehemiah for his request. Nehemiah asked the king to allow him to return to Jerusalem and begin the difficult task of rebuilding the walls for the people of Jerusalem. Because of God's favor, the king agreed. Nehemiah traveled to Jerusalem and inspected the walls and gates. Rebuilding the walls would be no easy task. And when the surrounding enemy nations heard of the plan to rebuild the walls, they became very angry and wanted to stop the work. But Nehemiah spoke to the people of Jerusalem and said, The hand of God is favorable to us and will give us success. Let us arise and rebuild this wall. What took place next was nothing short of a miracle. Each family that lived next to the wall began rebuilding their portion of the wall and necessary gates that surrounded Jerusalem. 
Each family went to work until their portion was built and completed. The surrounding enemy nations were very angry when they found out what was happening. They conspired to come against all the people of Jerusalem and attack them while they worked. This made the Jews fearful each day they worked on the wall. But when Nehemiah heard of their evil plan, he put men around the lowest parts of the wall for protection. Then he placed swords, spears, and bows in the hands of everyone that worked. They would hold a weapon to defend themselves in one hand and then work with the other hand. And as for the builders of the wall, each one had his sword strapped at his side. Nehemiah had the man who sounded the trumpet beside him. Then he said to all the people of Jerusalem, This work is difficult and covers a large area, and we are separated on the wall far from one another. At whatever place you hear on the sound of the trumpet, run to us there. Our God will fight for us. From then on, the work never ceased. With Nehemiah's faithful leadership and God-given strength, the rebuilding of the wall was finished in an astonishing 52 days. In the days and years that followed, Nehemiah was made governor of Jerusalem, and Ezra the priest taught the laws and commandments of God to the people of Jerusalem.